This is a buyer's guide for anybody looking for a MacBook Pro in 2020. Which laptop should you get as a creative professional? So as soon as the MacBook Pro 2020 13 inch was announced by Apple, I received a ton of questions in the comment section of my video asking, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a video editor, I'm a photographer, should I get the mid tier? Or should I get the high end version of the 13 inch MacBook Pro? Or should I just go for the 16 inch model because it's only a little bit more than the maxed out 13 inch model? I'm so confused, which one should I buy? And also there was some frustration by the fact that Apple used the old eighth gen i5 processor in this laptop. So we're gonna talk about all that and more and help you understand which laptop is right for you as a creative professional. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser, and this is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. What we're looking at today is which MacBook Pro is right for you. Now, something that you definitely wanna keep in mind when you're purchasing a laptop is what you will be using it for. This is a pretty obvious thing, but a lot of times people look at the specs and they think, oh, how much power is that? And I want the most powerful one. For instance, um, my dad purchased the i9 version of the 2019 MacBook Pro. And all he does is run Excel and do like web browsing and email and maybe make some docs and PDFs. So he didn't need that much power, but he just thought, you know, I want the fastest MacBook Pro I can get. I don't want anything to slow me down. When in fact, uh, he's not getting all the use out of that computer. He could have saved probably about a thousand dollars or more and gone with one of the models we're going to recommend here in this video today. So that's the thing is don't overshoot your showcase just because you want the power. Make sure you're getting a suitable model for the task that you are doing on the day to day. So if you're a graphic designer, that means you're working in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. If you're a photographer, you're working in Photoshop, Lightroom, Camera Raw. If you're a video editor, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. If you're a 3D animator or designer, that means you may be working in Illustrator, After Effects, or Blender. So we're gonna keep these things in mind as we're working through this video in our recommendations. First thing we're gonna look at is the new MacBook Pro 13 inch i5 base model. Okay, this one starts at around $1,200 MSRP and comes with the eighth gen i5 processor. It has integrated Intel plus graphics, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of solid state storage. Now, a few big upgrades are the base model comes with more than 128 gigs now, which is awesome. You can get up to 32 gigs of RAM and it has the Magic Keyboard. So that's definitely a big upgrade, even though they've kept this same processor. And I think Dave2D did a phenomenal job talking about why they kept this processor, and it's because the power would only have increased so much moving to the 10th gen. Apple really optimizes their Intel processors. They actually get what looks like they always get their own processor, because if you notice, you can never find that processor in any other computer but an Apple product. So they work with Intel to really optimize these processors to work with their system. So since they were already working with that eighth gen processor and optimized it very well, it, was, it wasn't a, a smart decision to upgrade to the 10th gen if they weren't gonna see a performance increase of a substantial amount. And let me show you specifically what I'm talking about here. So I've pulled up here on Passmark. This is the original i5-8257U processor that they use in their last year MacBook Pro and this year MacBook Pro. So I'll pull this up for you here. So it's the i5-8257U, and compared to a bunch of Windows computers using the latest i5-10-2110U, you can see that their optimized processor in Passmark is beating out this processor for an overall CPU score. Now, we're going to talk about more about this processor in a few minutes, but as you see, what was the point of upgrading? They weren't going to get any sort of performance boost. It would have cost you more money, possibly, and them, and rather, they just kept the older processor and saved the R&D for more important things. What are those important things? Well, we're not quite sure yet because Apple hasn't told us, so we'll find out when they launch the next model of the MacBook Pro. But let's jump back in here, and I'm recommending this laptop for graphic designers. You're working in Photoshop. Illustrator or InDesign. I'm recommending it for photographers working in Photoshop, Lightroom, and Camera Raw. The reason being is you don't need graphics processing for these programs. So the mid-tier to high-end model is where you start to see a better integrated graphics processing, uh, not unit, uh, integrated graphics into the CPU. 
So when you're working in Photoshop, when you're working in InDesign and Illustrator, you don't need the graphical processing that you would need while you're video editing or you're doing motion design because you're just displaying basically still graphics on the screen. So that's why I think this base model is very suitable for graphic designers. And it's very suitable for people who, you know, maybe are a book publisher or, or they're an, um, a writer and they want to make their own book layouts in InDesign. I think this is a fantastic computer for that use case. All right, let's keep moving forward. And next we're going to look at the mid tier model. So this is starting at $1,700 and this is where we get the 10th gen Intel i5 processor with the Intel Iris plus graphics. So this is an improved graphics processing, uh, integrated graphics over this model here. And this one comes base with 16 gigs of Ram and 512 gigs of solid state hard drive. This is the laptop I'm recommending where you can jump into some light, 1080p video editing. So all the previous recommendations plus people who are interested in video editing. So this isn't somebody who's doing video editing as like their main gig. This might be somebody um, who is working in Photoshop and InDesign for as a graphic designer, but then on the side, they want to start getting into video editing and doing some fun projects or you're posting to YouTube and you know, you're doing 1080p projects, but you're not doing massive projects. You know, maybe your videos are anywhere from two to eight minutes long tops. This would be a great computer. It won't bottleneck and slow you down a lot with some light 1080p video editing. Why did they decide to go with the 10th gen processor on this model though, is the question. All right, so as we look here, we're gonna go over back to our past marks, benchmarks. And as you see, there's a pretty good improvement, not massive over last year's processor. But the reason that this processor is good for video editing is because of the integrated graphics. See this G here? the G7, that's the integrated graphics that improves this processor's performance for something like video editing. Where this is the U processor, it is a lower version of the integrated graphics. It is not as powerful, and that's why this improved processor is important for this model. As we're going through this video, if you have any questions or you're curious about more in-depth specs, where you can get the computers I'm talking about, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links that I've provided. Now, if you do use that link, it is an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So I always appreciate when you guys use those links. All right, now moving up to the high tier model, this is starting at around $2199, so about $2200. Let's add tax on there. We're sitting around probably $23.5 or so. And this has the new 10th gen Intel Core i7. This also has the integrated graphics, starts with 16 gigs of RAM. And this gets all my previous recommendations plus larger 1080p video editing projects. So this one is not gonna bottleneck as much because you got that i7 processor. Now this is not the same processor that's in the 16 inch model of the MacBook Pro. This is a mobile processor. Uh, it's a ultra low power processor rather than the high performance processor that is in this 16 inch base model. All right, so if you're somebody who's getting a little bit more excited about video editing, maybe you don't wanna dump out and completely go for the new MacBook Pro or you want a smaller, more portable computer, that's where you'll be sitting. Now, hang on, keep hanging on to this video because I'm gonna make a recommendation for another computer that I've been recommending a lot it's actually the 2015 MacBook Pro. So hang on to the end of the video. We're going to talk more about that recommendation, but we're going to keep moving through these, these recommendations right now. But I have a lot of people asking me, if it's only $200 more MSRP, why would I not go for this 16-inch base model? And I completely agree. You're going to get the latest 9th Gen i7 9750H high-performance processor. You're going to get dedicated graphics processing, and you're going to get a larger screen it really, to me, is a no-brainer. Plus, this price difference is actually not as extreme because if you get on like Amazon or Best Buy or even B&H or one of those things or even click the link below, you're going to see that this laptop is not pricing for as much as the MSRP. So in my opinion, I would, I would not recommend this model because you can get this model for this same, almost the same price and it has the processor that you need to really get the performance that you're looking for if you are a video editor. Now, if you're looking for a smaller computer, then that makes sense that you would go with this one because you want maybe a smaller on the go laptop. But for the price, I just can't justify making this purchase over this purchase. So that's that's my opinion. And, that's, and like I've said, this is for graphic designers, photographers, 1080p and 4K video editing and some mid-level mid motion design projects. I think this would be great for those projects. All right, next we're going to move up to the high tier. This adds the eight core 
9th gen i9 processor and you get better integrated graphics. So this is where you get all the previous recommendations plus larger motion design projects and After Effects and other motion design programs. This is made possible by the more powerful GPU. So those are my recommendations for people looking for a MacBook Pro in the current lineup. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the 2014 and 2015 15 inch MacBook Pros. The price point on these MacBook Pros is around 900 to roughly $1,200. You know, I'll give or take a little bit here. And the reason I recommend these laptops so much is because they have a quad core Intel i7 processor that gets better performance than the base model of the 13 inch MacBook Pros and has dedicated graphics depending on which model you get. So as you see here, this is really the SKU number you wanna be looking for. You wanna be looking for this SKU number in 2014 and this SKU number will not have dedicated graphics in 2015, but this SKU number will. Now let's talk a little bit more about how to find this laptop if you are interested in saving some money and getting a laptop that'll work great for graphic design and some 1080p video editing. I would not recommend this laptop for 4K. I've run all kinds of benchmarks on my channel. I have a full playlist talking about this laptop specifically. So if you're curious, you can go into the YouTube cards above and check out a full playlist of benchmarks I've done, the reasons I think it's a great buy even in 2020. So you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. But let's go show you real quick how to find the right laptop uh, and pick the one that you would like. So let's come over here to Amazon. So I'm here on Amazon and I found a 15 inch MacBook Pro, but how do I know what model this is? Well, if they've included the model number, this makes it really simple. You can grab this model number, head on over to Google and paste this model number in. Immediately you'll get every Mac. I recommend using this site. They have really good data on all the Macs that have ever existed. We'll click into here and then we'll scroll down to VRAM, video card. Okay, this has dedicated graphics in it. That means this is gonna be a great 1080p video editing laptop. Like I said, maybe some light 4K, but I, I don't recommend it. It's, it's not gonna be suitable for that. You're, you're just gonna be frustrated at the performance. So that's how you understand, okay, wow, this is a dedicated graphics card with an i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM, and it's a Mac product for under $1,200. Awesome. Okay, so you can also go ahead to every Mac, and here is the 11.5 model. And as we come down here, this is a 2015 version, we see the Radeon R9 dedicated graphics in this model. Okay, so that's how you find one of these laptops. And like I said, if you wanna dive deeper into the different specs on this laptop and why I recommend it, you can check out that playlist. All right, now let's jump on over here and compare head to head the 13 inch model versus the 2015 15 inch model. It's nearly double the price. It has better performance in the CPU. It has better performance in the dedicated graphics, it has the same RAM, but obviously you can you know change this in the 13 inch model where you're basically maxed out on whatever somebody installed on the model that you get with 2015 which most models come with 16 gigs of ram and i would recommend going with 16 gigs of ram if i were you and they both have great keyboards so this has the original scissor switch keyboard this has the new magic keyboard um, if you know much about the different keyboards that is basically the same keyboard obviously there's been some improvements in the last five years to that keyboard but it's still a great keyboard so that is the 2020 buyer's guide for MacBook Pros. Obviously you have a lot to choose from still, but I hope that I've given you a clear picture on what laptop is right for you. Again, if you're curious about learning more about the 2015 MacBook Pro, I have a whole series of videos. And like I said, you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. But if you've decided and you know, okay, I know which laptop I'm gonna get, head down in the description below. You can use one of those links. Again, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's why I'm able to keep putting out these videos, keep helping you guys out. So I'm always super grateful when you guys use those links. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you guys here on the next episode.